you know, when, uh, if you recall certain things of our life when we were children, you know, even playing games and whatever it was, if, if you were kind of like left in a dark room, you kind of freaked out, you know? <laughs> I mean, people used to leer one another into a room and then shut the door on them. Ah! You know? And uh, we have pleasure watching people freak out for some reason. <laughs> so anyways, uh, but there, there's that area where, you know, being left in the dark was frightening as a child. And, uh, you know, I remember many times in, in, in my young age uh, where I would wake up to things that were not even realizing that there were demonic forces in my room and waking me up and fear, the presence of fear was just overwhelming. As a child, I lived in fear. And, uh, and, and, and in that left in the dark, you know, you always wonder, I, I, one of the things that the Holy Spirit was sharing with me, do you remember those things when you were a child? Well, think about what's going to happen when people are left in the dark. To be eternally separated from God and left in darkness. And that's where the word says that the outer darkness is where it's gnashing of teeth. Because people will be tormented by the demonic forces left in darkness. And one of the things we don't want to do is be left in the dark. You know, and... You know, in the last time we gathered, we talked about the spirit, the lying spirits and, and how they lie to us. And the foundation of Satan's kingdom is the lying spirits, which bring deception, delusion, and confusion. Where individuals really can't make the right choices. And, and, and in this, one of the things that the Holy Spirit was bringing to me, that there's going to be many who are going to be left in darkness. They're going to be left. Some will be never will be kept in darkness. Some will re, return to darkness, and some will be left in darkness. And it's something that we we must come to an understanding in that, uh, that arena, especially where we are right now. What's going on right now in the world? Where we stand right now? Where the body of Christ stands? Where the events are and the things that are happening? Would you turn to the book of John in chapter three? We wouldn't be here if we didn't want to be left in the darkness. Amen? <laughs> in John 3, in verse Is everybody there? And Jesus answered, Most truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. In other words, there's a difference. If when we are born of the flesh, we are born in darkness. That's why we must be born of the Spirit so we can get born again in light. Those who are not born again will be kept in darkness. If they die in that condition, they go to hell. They will always stay in darkness. That's just the way it is. Has everybody got it? But I also believe that in some way, somehow, individuals that have never, these are individuals that have rejected the truth. Now, there may be individuals that have never had the truth. And for that, I can't answer that. Only God can answer that. The Bible says there's only one way home, and that's through Christ Jesus. But those individuals who have possibly died never knowing the truth, it's very possible the Lord visits them and gives them an opportunity to accept him or not. But that I don't know. Only God knows. And I don't think any one of us know. Only God knows. Amen.
and in verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why were their deeds evil? Because they were born in darkness. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. Let me tell you, when I was out there serving darkness, uh, I didn't want to see daylight there at times. Don't open those curtains, I'll kill you. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So we see here that there is a tremendous difference of being born of darkness and born of light. That which is born of the flesh is born of darkness. In other words, everybody's name is written in the book of life when you're born, even when you're born in darkness. It stays in or is blotted out when you give up your last breath. So that determines where you are, your relationship with the Lord. So in this, he says something very powerful. He says that because we were born of darkness and loved darkness, we hated light. Because what? Light exposes darkness. That's why there's a certain level where individuals go to and they stop going. Let me share something with you very important. The word says that we know them by their fruit. When there's that area where it's not, fruit is not only what a, word, a person speaks, it's how they respond, how they react. What is their association with the presence of God? Now, some people can get real goofy in God's presence and have a form of anointing. They can fake until they make it. But there's that area where there's something not right when an individual does not want to come into God's presence, especially corporately. Why? See, they get to a level where those spirits say no that are in them. They will not allow them to come. No matter what you try to do, no matter what's happened, they won't allow that person to come because the battle in them is overtaken by darkness more than light. Does everybody understand that? So one of the things that the, you'll know, listen, every one of us have to battle to come into God's presence in one way or another. But there should be a, a, an area that once we go to a certain level, we want more. See, but one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is to get there. So there's, especially, look, we live in a world where we're constantly being bombarded by enemy, by darkness. We're constantly, there's arrows shot at us, whether it's at work, or play, it doesn't matter. The enemy is always hitting us, always. So one of the things that we've got to do, that's why the Bible says abide, abide, and abide. We've got to come together corporately to get refreshed in worship. We've got to. It's vitally important. Why? So that we can overcome. Because we are overcoming inwardly before we can overcome outwardly. Amen? In 1 John chapter 2. Is everybody warm? Hallelujah. I thought we lived in Florida. <laughs> in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Now by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a what? A liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 
He who says he abides in him ought himself ought to also what? To walk just like he walked. And this is in character. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is what? Passing away, and the true light is already shining. But it doesn't mean that darkness is gone, does it? It's passing away. Why? Because since Christ came, light is spreading. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Now listen, brother here, there's two meanings to this. It's not only a brother who is of a Christian, but it's a brother who says human. You and I are not to hate people. We hate evil. Amen? So there are those who hate people, aren't they? They are not of us. Why? Because that person is what? In darkness. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has what? Blinded his eyes. Again, this is about hatred. Hating mankind. Hating your brother. Sister. Whatever. Darkness blinds the eyes where you not only can't see, but you can't hear. I'm going to say that again. It blinds us to the arena where not only we cannot see, but we cannot hear. I didn't say you couldn't listen. I said you couldn't hear. Because there's a lot of people that listen. They'll sit in front of you and nod their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have no intention of putting it to work. Because they're too busy about thinking of something else. There's a difference between listening and hearing. He who has an ear, hear what the Spirit says. So everybody got it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1. So if a person doesn't put to practice what he's learned, he didn't hear, he only listened. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's put it together. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have what? Renounce the hidden things of shame. In other words, we're willing to expose our garbage. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our what? Our gospel is veiled. That is the message of truth, which is light. If it is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Why? Because they are what? In darkness. They've been left in darkness. They're kept in darkness. Or someone that's fallen back into darkness. But even if our gospel is veiled, is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, and we know that Satan's kingdom, who do not believe, which means follow, lest the what? Light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Again, 
The message of light is the message of Jesus Christ. It is a message of light. It is called gospels. It's called epistles. These are messages. People experience things with God and have written them. These are frozen times of revelation that can be thought out at any second, in any moment. These are recorded space and times of revelation of God that are released and can be placed anywhere God wants it so that it will bring life and light to someone at a certain time. Again, I want to share something with you that it is important because we keep looking at certain things as the Bible and things of testimony. Let me tell you again, these are frozen, taking out, bam, recorded, wham, frozen events of revelation of light that is life-changing to bring something into someone's life somewhere to be released so that person has light in exposing their darkness. This Bible is nothing but a recorded, frozen, in time, revelations of the purity of Christ and testimonies of his light that can be thought out or released and received as it's illuminated in a person's life where it brings revelation by the Spirit. See, the word illuminates, the Spirit brings revelation. Hallelujah. The message of the light is the message of Jesus Christ. All others are messages of darkness. Any other message that is not of Jesus Christ is a message of darkness. And that message of darkness will keep individuals in darkness, will cause people to fall back in darkness, and people will be left in darkness when it's time for us to go. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 14, let's read it together. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Hello. <laughs> Stop petting it. Stop associating with it. Stop compromising about it. It says don't walk in it. Avoid it. And do not travel on it. Hello. Avoid it and do not want travel on it. Don't be a bonehead. What does it say? Turn away. From, I love this. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. <laughs> For they do not sleep unless they have done what? Evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they have made someone fall. Evil does get, gets no rest until they've accomplished someone to fall. See, everyone here, not only are angels assigned to you, but the angels will cooperate according to the word of God when you speak it. Other than that, there is an assigned amount of demons and principalities over each and every one here also. So they know whether you're cooperating with the spirit of God or with the spirit of evil. And the spirit of evil comes as an angel of light. So there's a false light there too that you must be careful but again, when individuals are taken away from the presence of worship, because why? Let me tell you, 
we just received light. We just drank light. It's been beautiful. We get enlightened. Now, you can come in here and not participate and think about everything else, and you won't get touched. You won't get filled. Because you're really, there's, that's the same thing of the difference between listening and hearing. It, where, where you're either seeking or you're just standing. That's the difference between someone who likes to play in football games or whatever it is, tennis, I don't care, even <clears throat> gin rummy, I don't know. You're either participating or you're standing and watching in a bandstand. Amen? One or the other. Let's go a little further. It says this, verse 17, For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of what? Violence. Verse 18, But the path of the just is like the what? Shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them what? They do not know what makes them stumble. Listen to this. Okay. My son, give attention to my words. Why? Because his words are light. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Why? Because when you hear, you see. When you see, you hear. There's a, see, there's a union here. But when you don't hear, you don't see. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't hear. If you don't hear, you don't see. When you're listening, you don't see. Only when you hear do you see because it becomes a part in your spirit. It's a resource in your soul that is pulled with information. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22, read it with me. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. The way of wickedness is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. He says, pay attention. Hear my words. Let them bring light and life to you that you may see. Again, if you don't see, then you haven't heard. Isaiah 5. These are areas where we don't want to fall to darkness or be left in darkness. Left in the dark. I remember as a young driver, I used to like to leave people in the dust. <laughs> there was a saying left in the dust <laughs> well there's that saying that we don't want to be left in the dark you know sometimes people say well man you left me in the dark why because the person didn't know what was going on did they well why didn't you tell me why'd you leave me in the dark <laughs> Isaiah 5, verse 20. Woe! Hallelujah. When you see woe, it means without eternity. Woe! I'm not talking about woe riding a horse. I'm talking about woe without eternity. 
Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink who justify the wicked for the bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Woe without eternity. Darkness. See, when he's saying those who, who call light darkness and darkness light, it's the same parallel that he was using those who call good evil and evil good. But it's associated with darkness. And we are seeing this tremendously today, aren't we? Tremendously. We see darkness superseding everything, but God is allowing it and hope that individuals will be ushered into light also because they will see what's going on. Many of them will finally realize, man, I'm being lied to. I'm being lied to. And they'll want to start seeking truth because in hope of this, there'll be a, an awakening. And Luke 11 So many are left in the dark. So many of our families are left in the dark. So many Christians are left in the dark. In, verse, in chapter 11, verse 34. Would you read it with me, please? The lamp of the body is the what? Eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. Wait a minute now. So when your eye is good, well, how can your eye be good? When you what? Hear. See, if you're listening, your eye is not good because you just can't see correctly. That means that there is deception, which brings delusion, and there's confusion because that's the ability to not make the correct choices. Let's go a little further, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's do 34 again. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is also full of what? Darkness. Therefore, take what? Heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Why? Because you could be partaking something that is a false light. Does everybody get that? So you, doesn't the Bible say that the devil comes as the angel of light? See, one of the things the powers of darkness like to do, they like to mix 1% of truth and 99% of deception. Because their, their foundation is lying. The enemy's foundation is nothing but lie. So he says, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part of dark, no part of dark, the whole body will be full of light as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. Now, again, take heed the light that is not it is not darkness because Satan comes as an angel of light. Lying spirits bring deception. Lying spirits bring deception. That's what keeps a person in darkness. They bring delusion. That's what causes a person to fall back into darkness who was a believer. And it keeps a person in confusion so they cannot make the right choice. 
and they get left in darkness or left behind. That's a person that is left in the dark. Is everybody okay? John chapter 1. You know, when a spirit said to me this morning as I was praying, because I was wanting to go to another arena and I was interrupted, gently, lovingly interrupted by the Spirit of God, and he said, left in the dark. He said, too many of my people are left in the dark. And I began to reveal certain things and that I'm, I'm not going to get it involved, all of that, but there were certain things that, and I was... And it brought such a concern that so many people are left in the dark. And again, just that saying alone is how many times have somebody said, man, I've been left in the dark. In other words, they didn't know. Or what they did is they cho chose to refuse to hear and only listen, and then they thought they were left in the dark. And then the enemy turns and twists things around and keeps a person in distance from fulfilling what God wants them to do from the presence of God and staying filled with light. And they can't make that right decision. They, their decisions are 99.5% made on how they feel instead of what God says. And they're going to tell you God says it all the time. Hallelujah. John, the Gospel of John, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. That means that light must get turned on. Hello? That light must be what? Turned on. And that light is turned on when somebody accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Other than that, that light is not turned on. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name or follow him, who were born of what? Not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God or what we call born of the Spirit. A light must be turned on and then the light must be maintained to stay on. In Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 12. We've heard this plenty of times. Left in the dark, man. Don't be left in the dark. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. The rulers of the darkness of this age, which want to keep people in darkness, get them to fall back into darkness so that they are left in the dark. They are the rulers of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So we are fighting the unseen realm of darkness. Amen? Who want to keep us in a state of deception, delusion, and confusion by the spirits that lie to each and every one of us. The, we fight against these rulers of darkness of this age. These rulers of darkness of this age are not only principalities and so forth, but are demons. They're hybrids. They're what people call aliens, which are fallen angels with technology. Hybrids. There are things that are being born out of test tubes now. All kinds of stuff that people don't even realize what's going on. 
But when they see that demonic army coming, they're going to know these are not human. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 15. Would you read it with me? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. This is something that keeps a person in darkness. The lust of the eyes. This is something that causes a person to fall back into darkness. Is everybody okay? And the pride of life is a protector of darkness. It's a protector of self. Because self is the offspring of darkness. We see that the lust of the flesh is associated in the area of desires for selfishness, things of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, what we got a teaching called eye candy. <laughs> and it's the desire for worldly goods. Everything a person sees. And pride of life it rejects humility. Pride of life rejects humility. Certainly hates correction. Do not love the world or the things in the world. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who what? Does the will of God, does what? Abides forever. Does what? Where's your Bible? You got it? You with me? He's got. But he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. So doing the will of God means that you're doing what? You're maintaining the light. It means you're keeping that light on all the time. It means you're staying filled with. You're not being deceived. You're not being in a place of delusion. You're not in a place of confusion. You are hearing you are seeing and you're making choices according to the will of God James 4 James chapter 4 in verse 6 James 4, verse 6. Let's speak it together. He says, but he gives more what? Grace. Therefore, he says, God does what? He resists the proud. In other words, why? Because that person rejects to be humble. But gives grace to the what? Humble. Grace is God's plan. The plan is a way of escape. That's why many individuals go into captivity because they reject the plan. They reject the plan. Why? Because of pride. They will humble themselves. Refuse to hear. Verse 7, what does it say? Therefore do what? Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So is submitting, submitting to God being humble? Yes. So by submitting to God, we are staying filled with light. You know, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, there's peace, joy, and righteousness. <laughs> no matter what's going on, something may occur where it's like what wants to get you angry, but you get through it. You know, certain things, it's like, 
they're, they're so easily overcome. The simplicity of Christ it, when you are filled with the Spirit of God, truly filled, when you're truly hearing, when you're truly worshiping, things are easily to overcome. There isn't that, you know, God says, I won't give you anything more than you can handle. Well, who does? <laughs> we allow it. You know, somebody, had, th there's times when people argue about well, why would God allow this to happen? Or why would God allow that to happen? God doesn't. We do. Remember, he gave the earth to man. And he gave us dominion, even though Satan was the ruler. We still have dominion under Christ. The Bible says that we are made a little bit lower than God. So when you are born again of the Spirit, because that's what he says, you are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Well, that look at the devil ain't seated in heavenly places. Hello. In fact, he got thrown from those heavenly places. So we have dominion, don't we? But see, as a man thinks, so he is. So if the enemy can shut your light off or dim it, then we begin to sway. Then we, we begin to hear what the enemy says and see what he says instead of rejecting it. You know, we should be listening and not hearing the enemy. You know he's there. Hello. You know he's there. He's every, you know, does everybody understand that? Man, listen, we, this is his place now. We're on his property. His lease is almost up. So he's going to try and do whatever he can to extend his lease. <laughs> in Proverbs chapter 2. And it doesn't mean we won't make a mistake. Hello? Everybody's going to get goofy sometime. We're going to make a mistake, but you know the beauty of it is we know we made the mistake. Look, a, a mistake is not a mistake until it's corrected. A mistake is not a mistake until it's corrected. Would you be quiet? Hello? Listen, when you correct a mistake, amen? When you correct it, it's a mistake. Does everybody get it? It doesn't bring guilt and condemnation on you, does it? Why? Why? Because it's been corrected, but who's the one that corrects it? Does everybody understand this? This has got nothing to do with the area of me and you anymore. This has got to do with your relationship with the Lord. I'll never forget when the Lord said to me, God, your mistakes are my problems. So my, per my whole function, my purpose is to expose my mistake. So how did I fix it? I exposed it. Does everybody get this? So when I expose my mistake, when I confess my mistake, it's fixed. It may not be fixed physically. That ain't my problem. But it's sure fixed spiritually. Does everybody get this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 2. <laughs> Proverbs 2.10 Is everybody there? <laughs> Remember who your mistakes are whose problems? So how are you going to fix your mistake? Hallelujah, you're going to expose it. So that's how you fix it, right? So a mistake is not a mistake until you what? Fix it. How do you fix it? Expose it. Because you recognize it was what? A mistake.
You'll get in a few years. <laughs> Proverbs 2, verse 10. My wife's always three days late. Let's read verse 10. <laughs> so we can catch you up, honey. <laughs> when wisdom enters your heart... <laughs> And knowledge is pleasant to your soul. <laughs> Discretion will preserve you. <laughs> Understanding will keep you. And deliverance will heal you. <laughs> to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of what? Uprightness from those who leave the path of what uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness These are ones that will fall back into darkness Who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked whose ways are crooked and Who are devious in their path to deliver you from the immoral woman now everybody thinks this is, this is talking about a female woman now, there's another arena to this. Because this woman is known as Babylon. It is the mystery woman, the harlot of Babylon. It is about a religion. It was understood as Nimrod's religion, Babylon. So deliver you from the immoral woman and from the seductress who flatters with her words who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead. None who go to her return. Nor do they regain the path of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Again, the, to leave the path of righteousness and go to the path of wickedness is what many individuals are doing now. And one of these is, is because they are falling under the immoral woman of Babylon the Great, which is... Nimrod's religion and why is this happening because they are not maintaining the true pure light some of the individuals the light that is in them is not the true light it's actually darkness does everybody understand that it is what darkness and it's causing an individual to go back or fall back into darkness remember Lying spirit is not a spirit of light. Amen? It's a spirit of darkness. Satan comes as an angel of light. So there's all kinds of things going on. There's new. I'm seeing believers mixed with new age movements. I'm seeing believers mixed with uh, uh, Wicca. And all, I'm telling you what, it's just plum crazy. What, what's the other thing now? Uh, uh, Christum. Chrism or whatever it is. It's supposed to be Christian and Islam. They want to mix together. I mean, it's just getting crazy. Go to Revelation 17. Hallelujah. Revelation 17, verse 1. 
Would you speak it with me, please? The one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. This word waters, this is not a location, okay? The word waters means nations of people. This is not a location, so it's not the harlot that's surrounded by water. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw the woman sitting on a scarlet beast. That beast is the Antichrist. which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her. Again, the beast is associated with Antichrist, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was, was and is not and will ascend out of the what? Bottomless pit. Now, listen. The Antichrist body is here now. I'm sharing with you the Antichrist body is here now. But the Antichrist, the beast from the bottomless pit, will take his body. The beast, verse 8, that you saw was and is not. That means somehow there must be a destruction, a death, something occurred to that body. And will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. They will marvel at this. From the foundation of the world. Why? Because they have been kept in darkness. Or they have fallen in darkness. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. So they will be in darkness. Again, this is the woman the, uh, that was talked about in Proverbs 2. It's associated with the Babylonian religion under Nimrod. And there's a whole history uh, about Nimrod and, and, and his mother. And then uh, and, and eventually marrying his mother, which became Lilith and, and so forth. And everything that they spoke about was like a, a virgin birth. And they, then they called the child, the child that was supposed to come was supposed to be the reincarnation of Nimrod. And it started all of this stuff and all of this religious garbage. The, and, and, and in this, it continued on. Now, so we see here that the religion of Babylon will be associated with Nimrod. Is that the, the economy of Babylon will be associated with the Roman Empire economy. And the dictatorship will be associated with Hitler. It'll be just like Hitler. The woman prostitutes herself to all takers. All takers of pleasurable defilement of all flesh engaging in dark practices of the mystery Babylon, religious worship. And this religious worship will be a worship of the Antichrist, anything associated with Babylon's education, Babylon's music, perversion, greed, and pride. These things will leave people left in darkness. They'll be left in the dark. Again, he says to this, the beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit 
and go to perdition. And that's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And verse 3. <clears throat> I want you to understand that the beast is not human. It's being released from the bottomless pit. Most likely, it will be associated with a pollen. Remember the angels that were that the Lord chained and cast down, where did he chain them? They're in a the bottomless pit. And eventually they will be released. And where is the Lord going to uh, uh, chain Satan and so forth when he comes? And where is he going to put him? Back to the bottomless pit. It says in verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means that for the day will come unless the... Uh, the for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. The what? Son of perdition. Remember, the beast comes out to what? For perdition. Amen? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. In verse 9, it says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deceptions among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness, which is associated with Babylon. They will be either kept in darkness, fall back in darkness, or be left in the dark. And Matthew 25 and verse, verse 31. Matthew 25 and verse 31. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. As a goat represents rebellion, sheep represents lays down his life. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Hello. They'll be left where? In the dark. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you, or thirsty, and you drank? When did we see you stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, But surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of these least of these, me, these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. Naked, you didn't clothe me. Sick in prison, you didn't visit me. Then they will also will answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry, thirsty, and stranger, naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? 
And he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So the goats we see are on the left. I'm talking about left in the dark. Amen? Left in the dark. There is a government that is left in the dark. Hello? And there is a government that's in the light. Has everybody got it? There will be many who claim to be a conservative right, but practicing the ways of the left. They are considered darkness. Did you ever understand why? I, you know, it, it was so amazing to me when I kept seeing the difference, and I don't care about political whatever, but there is an area of left and right, isn't there? They've established it. Everybody knows left and right in the political arena. Well, why is, all, why is the left blinded? Because it's biblical. Why don't they see it all the way through? Why are they promoting abortion and, and same-sex marriage and everything else? But yet there are those who are proclaiming to be conservative right that are practicing the ways of the left. They will be left in darkness. They will be left in darkness. And when it's time for this body to leave this earth, if they have not repented for their ways, they will be left in the dark. Amen? Praise God. The Bible tells us that you and I were once darkness. Go to Ephesians 5. Left in the dark. You know, the word also tells us that God will give us the treasures of darkness, the riches of the secret places. Now, I'm not talking financially, and I'm, but it does associate with that. But I'm talking about the treasures of darkness. In other words, God is going to expose their operations. God is going to expose their secrets. And that's what he's been doing. And I'm telling you that it's being more exposed in this last year than it has ever been. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Amen? Praise God. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed that we are not left in the dark, but we are right in the light. Hello? <laughs> but there's only one right, and that's you, Lord. So, Lord, we cast off all works of darkness. We repent for any associations with the works of darkness that would cause us in any way whatsoever to fall back in to darkness, to be left in the dark. And Lord, we just pray right now for those that are kept in dark, somehow, some way, that they would be reached 
Reach through your body. Re reach through your word. Reach through DVDs. Reach through videos and teachings. Lord, that they would be reached. Those that are unreachable would be reached. Somehow, some way that you'll dispatch your angels according to this request and supplication that we lay before you that there be no human not reached on this planet. No human, Lord. No one left in darkness. But they have an opportunity to be taken out of darkness into your glorious light. And we ask this in the name above all names, Jesus, and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.